Hello, how are you? <laughs> it's Luke, your favourite liker of games. It's been almost exactly a year since I did my last Q&A on here, so I put the call out and you guys well and truly answered. I have a lot of questions this year, so I'm going to hit straight into them. Um, let's go. First question, any advice for a new Instagamer? Um, yes, absolutely. I've actually wanted to do a whole video on this, but um, here's a compressed version. Firstly, follow as many pages as you can and then unfollow them. What this does is it makes you noticeable in people's notifications and they're more likely to follow back. Secondly, never interact with anyone. Make sure you know you are the most important person. <laughs> no. Firstly, post about what you love. That is like the most important thing. And enjoy posting. If you're not enjoying putting photos and videos up on Instagram, like, why are you here? Secondly, make friends. Don't stay in your own little bubble. Um, reach out to people, talk to them, comment, like, interact with people and they'll interact back. And it's not about like growing numbers, it's just about like building friendships, you know? These people are super cool and you all have this wonderful, wonderful thing in common. So that's like, that's so important to me. A lot of people see Instagram as like a business and sure it can get businessy and that's fine, especially if you've got a high number of subs and you want to turn it into something, which is fair. There's nothing wrong with that. But I know for me, like I didn't even change my page to a business profile until I hit 10,000 followers, which was just recently. For me, it's all about just hanging out, you know, there's, there's nothing else to it. So I've, I've always stayed away from like shout out for shout outs and like pods and like tagging people in my photos. These things do work, but I don't need them. I, I, I just post what I love and uh, I talk to people that I like and that is, I get so much enjoyment out of just those two things, you know? That's that's why I'm here, so. Yeah, that's that's my advice for any newbies. Just do what you love. Ah. Next question. Are you able to do a handstand? Um, let me tuck my shirt in. Oh my god. Oh. Not a good one is the answer. Um, I can do a cartwheel though. <laughs> Next question. Oh, there's handstands. <laughs> it's embarrassing. <laughs> do you like making people laugh? Because I very much appreciate it. Thank you, Taylor. Um, yes, I do, is the answer. If that isn't abundantly clear by now, uh, I don't know. Um, trying to make people smile is a lot of what I do. It's the reason I do the lip syncs, it's the reason I joke around on Instagram a lot. I'm just trying to make you guys smile because like, it's a good way to make the world a better place and, uh, and smiles are contagious. You never know, you might make someone's day and then that person will be happy for the rest of the day and make their family's day and their co-workers day. There's a really big effect, you'd be surprised. So I guess just like, Make people smile, make people laugh. There's nothing bad that can come from it at all. It's like one of the purest things in the world. So yes, uh, the answer is yes, I do. I love making people smile and I'm so glad you guys give me the opportunity. Um, this one's a double question because they're kind of the same question. How do you stay so positive? Do you ever have those days where you feel unmotivated and burnt out? And also has gaming helped you to stay positive and focused when life gives you a harsh time and how? Thanks, thank you. So how do I stay so positive? I don't know, I just feel like I'm a positive guy. Um, I try to make people smile and I also feed off that as well. When I do make people smile, the smiles come back to me. So um, I guess that keeps me smiling a lot. But I mean, I have my sad days and you'll occasionally see it peer through on Instagram. The thing about Instagram though is it doesn't matter if you're trying or not, everyone puts a version of themselves online. And like, I'm not always the happiest, bubbliest person in the world. I put that forth to try and make you guys happy, but you know, I have sad days, I have sad nights, and I've sort of gotten to the point where I'm like, that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes you can be sad and that's okay. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not a therapist, so I don't really want to talk about this too much, but I just know it works, works for me. And has gaming ever helped me with staying positive? Um, yeah, absolutely. I had a hard time uh, almost a year ago and it was around when Xenoblade Chronicles 2 came out, believe it or not. I played that for like 10 hours a day for, for eight days, I think, um, straight. And that just kept me distracted from the problem at hand, which probably isn't a good thing in retrospect, but it did help me. It did help me focus away from the thing and um, 
you know, it was good while it lasted. And then when I was done, I could take some time to process what was going on. Um, and I'm sure you guys have stories like that too. Gaming can help with a lot of things like that. There was a game I played earlier in the year called That Dragon Cancer, which is so sad. It's about a kid who gets cancer and it's based on a real life story. But like, that's the kind of game that could help you work through like grieving processes and stuff. There's a lot of games with a lot of emotion and um, if you're struggling with something like that, do some Googling and you might find that these games like really help you process stuff like this. Who knows, who knows? Uh, favorite game of all time and give us a really good reason why. Easy. Zelda, Ocarina of Time. And I've always said this, probably because partially I do have a nostalgia factor attached to it, but like the fact that it's this old is a 3D, like early 3D game and is still amazing by itself is a good enough reason for me. But then on top of that, the memorable characters, music, world, everything about this is just perfection. I adore this game. <laughs> What do you do to get into your creative zone? I don't know if I have a creative zone, and I know a lot of you guys think I'm like this super creative dude, but like, ah. my creative zone's almost like scrolling through your guys' feeds. I, I get little bits and pieces and ideas inspired by you, and um, I like to remix and remake and shuffle things to work in my own way. Um, I guess make my own versions of what you guys are doing, and that's a fair bit of my feed, to be honest. Um, as for like original ideas, I mean, you draw creativity from everywhere. You know, I could be sitting in the car um, and I'll get an idea and I'll just jot it down when I stop. Or I could be sitting at the office and I get an idea and I'll just like note it in my phone. So yeah, for me, um, cre creativity is everywhere. Use the notepad in your phone, jot down ideas when you get them and then make them into something. It's as simple as that. What are your favorite PSP and Vita games? Because my love for handhelds is infinite. Awesome. PSP, um, Kingdom Hearts, Birth by Sleep, Star Ocean First Departure, Ridge Racer 2, awesome drift action, Ape Escape on the Loose, remake of the original Ape Escape, and this is the way I played Ape Escape, the first game, fantastic. Daxter, I was bummed after Jack and Daxter went all GTA in Jack 2, so to go back to like its platforming roots was fantastic. And Tales of Eternia, my first Tales game and the reason I love Tales so much. This game is amazing. And for Vita, New Little King's Story, it's a remake of the Wii game. Um, it's not perfect, but um, I really liked it. Uncharted Golden Abyss, huge fan of Uncharted, huge fan of Nathan Drake, and I thought this game did the series justice. Especially considering it wasn't even made by Naughty Dog. Touch My Katamari, it's a given, I love Katamari. <laughs> And I'll also add Sly Cooper Thieves in Time. Um, this game runs beautifully on the beta. And as far as a Sly sequel, it is so good. Oh, and I also have the Unfinished Swan digitally. Um, it's really short and sweet. If you can get it for like dirt cheap on the beta, um, give it a spin. It's, uh, it's really unique and um, big fan. <laughs> Also, Eva Drake adds, um, if you had to choose any other career, no matter how impossible or odd it is, what would it be? Astronaut. I want to be in space. I want to go to the moon. Simple. Again, these next questions are similar, so I'm just going to group them together. If you could make your own video game, how would it look and how would you name it? And if you could make your own game, what would it be like? This is like, you're asking me to do like a 10 second game jam and this is really hard. Um, <laughs> how about video game collector? Tycoon, where you you have to go around to stores and search online for cheap video games and then add them to your collection. <laughs> Has that been done before? If anyone wants it, you can have it for free. You're bloody welcome. Ash Tingle asked, did you have a goth phase or such when you were younger? <laughs> goth, no. Um, or such. Uh, um, I'm going to show you this photo from 2012. It wasn't real this was like a parody of a goth phase that i put up on facebook because i thought it was really funny um enjoy but also back when i was like 13 14 years old there's this absolute corker of a photo of me and my cool simple plan jumper because i love simple plan it was real angsty what's that song don't know what it's like welcome to my life <laughs> it was an awkward phase it's fine um I lived through it, <laughs> um, but yeah, we all had a weird, weird couple of years through those teenage years, I think, um, and those were mine, unfortunately. <laughs>